Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt. And today I'll be breaking down why I don't invest in VFV and the danger of Canadian ETFs that hold US stocks. VFV is one of the most popular Canadian ETFs out there because it tracks the S&P 500, the 500 largest companies in the United States. But it does come with some hidden fees and downsides that most Canadians are not aware of. Instead, I invest in VOO, the US dollar version of this ETF for two main reasons. One, it's cheaper. I pay less in management fees every year. And two, it's more tax efficient. I'm able to avoid that 15% withholding tax on US dividends, which you can't do with a Canadian ETF. In this video, I'm focusing on VFV versus VOO to illustrate these points, but the same applies to any Canadian ETF that holds US stocks. As always, I include timestamps for each chapter, so feel free to skip ahead. I've wanted to make this video for years because it's a question that I get asked all the time, so I'm glad that it's finally here. Don't get me wrong, VFV is a fantastic ETF. I'm glad that it's so popular in Canada. It's a far better way to invest in the US market than a mutual fund. But VOO, the US dollar version, is even better, and that extra value really does make a difference over time. Both VFV and VOO track the S&P 500, the 500 largest companies in the US. So when you invest in these ETFs, you're buying a little piece of Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Visa, Google, Procter & Gamble, Tesla, etc. Both of these ETFs are owned by Vanguard, and they have the same portfolio. So what's the difference? VOO is traded on the New York Stock Exchange in US dollars, but VFV is traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange in Canadian dollars. And that's why VFV is so popular with Canadians. In fact, if we look here on Blossom, the social media app for Canadian investors, I'll include a link below, we can see the most held stocks. And you'll see that VFV is the third most popular investment with 2,350 holders. That's 12% of all users. Meanwhile, let's go to my portfolio and scrolling through my holdings, you'll see VOO, which makes up 2% of my portfolio. Clicking on VOO, you'll see that it only has 255 holders. 10 times less popular than VFV among Canadians. But it's the exact same fund. Both VFV and VOO hold the exact same companies and with the same weightings. In fact, VFV is just a wrapper of VOO. VOO is the original. It's the one that actually buys those 500 stocks. VFV, which came out two years later, doesn't buy those US stocks directly. It just buys shares of VOO. So you put money into VFV, Vanguard takes your money, charges higher fees, and then buys VOO. So what are you paying those extra fees for? Take out the middleman and buy VOO directly. That's what I do. So let's talk about the fees. Vanguard literally invented the ETF, and they're famous for charging rock bottom management fees. VOO is no exception, with an incredible MER of only 0.03%. That's how much in fees you pay every year, which is almost nothing. There are only a handful of ETFs with an MER lower than 0.03. Now let's look at VFV. Anytime you're buying an ETF in a different currency, more work is required. So they can charge you higher management fees for the same product. Since VFV trades in Canadian dollars, their MER is three times higher at 0.09%. That's still super low and a fraction of the average mutual fund, which can charge upwards of 2.5%. But the fact is with VFV, you are paying three times the cost every year for the same product. So you're always going to be a little bit behind. And I get it for small sums of money, 0.03% compared to 0.09% doesn't sound like much. But let's say you've been investing for 10 years and you've built up a portfolio of $100,000 tracking the US market. With VOO, you're paying 0.03% or $30 a year in fees. With VFV, you're paying triple or $90 a year in fees. That really starts to add up. The longer you invest and the larger your portfolio grows, the bigger impact these higher fees will have. So keep that in mind. Since VFV and VOO are passive funds, they have super low management fees. But if we look at more specialized ETFs, they have higher fees and the Canadian versions are even worse. VIG is the US Dividend Appreciation ETF which tracks US companies with increasing dividends. They still charge a very low MER of only 0.06%. That's great. But the Canadian version, VGG, is five times more expensive with an MER of 0.3%. That's a five times markup in annual fees for the same product. And when it comes to ETFs, an MER of 0.3% is no longer considered low. 
It's mid-tier at best. Here's the bottom line. The Canadian version of US ETFs will always be more expensive, so your profits will always be falling behind. So higher annual fees might not be enough to convince you, but how about a 15% reduction in your dividends? It's true, a Canadian listed US ETF will always have a smaller dividend yield than the US version. Let's compare VFE and VOO. Their stock charts are the same. Remember, it's the same fund, but look at the dividend. VOO has a dividend yield of 1.59%, but VFE only pays 1.29%. Why the drop? Foreign withholding taxes on US dividends. If you've been watching my channel, you've heard me say a hundred times, I do not hold US dividends in my TFSA because US dividends will be charged a 15% withholding tax even though the TFSA is tax-free. But if you hold US dividend stocks and ETFs in your RRSP instead, you avoid this 15% withholding tax to the US government. So my US investments can grow and compound even faster in an RRSP. And this is a common mistake that I get asked about all the time. Since VFV trades in Canadian dollars, you may think that these are Canadian dividends, but they're not. Those dividends come from US companies, so they will be taxed 15% right out the gate, and there's nothing you can do about it. But what if I hold VFV in my RRSP? Shouldn't that waive the 15% tax? Unfortunately, no. The only way to avoid taxes on your US dividend is to buy the US dollar version of the ETF, like VOO, and hold it in your RRSP. If you hold VFE or any Canadian ETF that holds US stocks, your dividends will be cut by 15%, no matter what. It's totally out of your hands, and that's because those taxes are paid by the ETF itself. Let's see this in action with VFE. Go to the VFE page on the Vanguard website, Scroll down and click on price and distribution. Go down to the annual distributions and you'll see for each year the different components that make up the dividend or distribution that you receive. With VFV, the vast majority of this money comes from foreign income, US dividends. So VFV has to pay the 15% withholding tax. If you divide these two numbers, you'll get 15%. Let's do the math real quick. Dividing these two numbers, we get 15%. So Vanguard pays 15% in tax and we get what's left over. That's why the dividend yield of VFV will always be lower than VOO. Of course, the S&P 500 contains mostly growth-oriented tech stocks, so the goal with VFV is more capital gains rather than dividends. But still, why lose out on 15% of that passive income when you could just hold VOO instead in your RRSP and collect that full dividend? This makes an even bigger impact with high-yield ETFs. Here we have ZDY, another Canadian ETF that tracks US dividend stocks. It has a respectable dividend yield of 2.6%, but remember, it's already lost 15% of that income because of those withholding taxes. Instead, if there was a US version of this ETF, you would receive the full dividend, over 3% yield. That does make a difference, year after year. So for me, investing in VOO is cheaper, more tax efficient, and more profitable than VFE. So is VFE always a mistake? No, not at all. If you are in a lower tax bracket and you don't expect your income to increase before retirement, then the RRSP really doesn't make sense for you. You should focus on the TFSA instead. And without the RRSP, you can't avoid the 15% withholding tax on US dividends, whether you buy VOO or VFV. So in that case, you might as well buy VFV in Canadian dollars and avoid currency conversion. And that currency conversion is what really scares off investors, especially beginners. I get it, we're paid in Canadian dollars, we spend Canadian dollars, so we want to invest in Canadian dollars. And I'm sure you know the high cost of exchanging currencies, which can be true, but there is a better way. If you use a broker like Wealthsimple Trade, they'll charge you a 1.5% conversion fee whenever you buy US investments, and they charge you again when you sell those investments. That can cost you a ton of money in the long run. That's why I only recommend Wealthsimple for Canadian investing. But for US investing, I use Questrade because I can hold both currencies and even better, I can use Norbert's Gambit to convert my Canadian dollars into US dollars without paying any conversion fees. And trust me, Norbert's Gambit is not complicated. I use it at least once a month, every time I buy US stocks. It literally only costs me $5 and in three days, I have US dollars ready to trade with. Watch my step-by-step -step tutorial to see exactly how it's done. I'm not exaggerating. This technique has saved me thousands of dollars over the years, and I wish more Canadians knew about it. 
To use Norbert's Gambit, I recommend Questrade, my favorite broker in Canada. And if you want to sign up, click my referral link down below to get $50 in commission-free trade rebates for the first 30 days. That saves you $50, plus I'll get a small referral bonus as well. The last thing I want to mention is currency hedging. I can make a whole video about this, but the short version is that it does not matter. VFV is unhedged, meaning that it is affected by the value of the US dollar. This can be misleading when you look at performance. On the Vanguard website, VFV has a 10 year return of 309%. That's amazing and even better than VOO with a return of 215%. How is that possible? They are the same fund. Well, because VOO is in US dollars, its profits only depend on the growth of the underlying stocks. If those stocks go up, the ETF goes up. Simple. The same applies for VFV, but on top of that, if the US dollar grows stronger, those US stocks are worth even more when you convert back to Canadian. And since the US dollar has grown significantly in the past 10 years, VFV benefits from that exchange rate. But this doesn't matter when you're comparing, because if you invested in VOO, you have US dollars. So when you eventually convert back into Canadian, you gain that same exchange rate benefit all at once. If you want proof, look at VSP, which is the hedged version of VFV. Basically, if you take VFV and you remove the US dollar appreciation, you're left with a 10 year return of 184%. Still great, but as expected, it's less than the 215% return you would get with VOO. Remember, Canadian ETFs will always underperform their US counterparts because the higher management fees and the 15% cut to their dividends. So there you have it. That's why I don't invest in VFV or any Canadian ETF that holds US stocks. So bottom line, which one should you choose? If you use an RRSP and Norbert's Gambit to convert into US dollars, then invest in VOO. It will earn you more money in the long run. But if you have a lower income and don't use the RRSP, then VFV is easier to get started and dollar cost average. But as your portfolio grows, it will cost you more every year. Thanks for watching guys and be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Every thumbs up and comment really does help me build this channel here on YouTube and hit that bell icon to be notified of my new videos. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook or Blossom at Canadian t-shirt, click the link in the box below or click the links on my homepage. Thanks everyone and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a t-shirt. Bye guys.